very familiar with Matthew 28 19 as many as can read it as many as can recite it let's say it together go therefore and make disciples of all nations ah. oh yeah let's go together now baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit but the command there is go and make disciples of who all nations generally when we're talking about nations many of us think about nigeria ghana russia uk america but what do we mean by that word nation the word nation there was translated from the greek word par ethne par ethne which actually refers to not countries like nigeria and uk it's talking about ethnic groups so the nations they are talking about igbo yoruba hausa ethnic fulani those are the real nations so when the bible says go and make disciples of all nations it's talking about he says that the gospel must get to every nation it must be preached to every nation it's talking about the ethnic nationalities now what's the difference between those ethnic nationalities and the countries we call nigeria ghana all those countries ethnic nationalities they were formed at the tower of babel in genesis 20, genesis chapter 11. we remember the story at genesis chapter 11. the people the bible says the people they were one they spoke only one language there was only one ethnic group and they came united for a purpose that was contrary to the purpose of god they said they will stay there and build and god told them to spread and when god saw that they were united god said he was going to scatter them so that day as they were building maybe the man wanted to say he was expected to say bring me the cement he said don't want la cement uh -uh. the man who was supposed to answer him in english was saying Kin -i -wo -i -so. and there was confusion and all of them started speaking their language that is the beginning of the nations they are talking about those are the ethnic nationalities so they were formed where at in genesis chapter 11 at the, at the tower of babel but when we talk about the nations where was nigeria formed the countries the geo geographical enclaves like nigeria when was nigeria formed 1914 abby some countries were formed 500 years ago but none was formed those nations those geographical countries none of them was formed as at genesis 20 genesis 11. so th there is a difference between those ethnic nations ethnic nationalities like urobo isoko yoruba there's a difference between them and the geographical enclaves those geographical creations and let me tell you this one of the mistakes people make they think that it's only in africa that we have we have ethnic nationalities ethnic nationalities are everywhere for example the former coach of nigeria what was his name gernot roa they will call him franco german which geographical country was he from germany but ethnically he was a frenchman the same way we know asen venga when you hear asen venga it will suggest to you that that name is french when you hear Anton Griezmann, it will suggest to you that it is French. But those people, they are German. They are, uh, uh, sorry, those names sound German. Wenger, Griezmann. But the truth is that they are French. They are French national. They are German ethnic, ethnic nationalities, but in France, within, geographically within France. And we know what's happening within Ukraine, between Ukraine and Russia now there are some ethnic russians their ethnic group is russia but they are located within the geographical country called ukraine so you have ethnic nationalities everywhere all over the world 
So when they say it's only Africa, you have ethnic nationalities, they lie. You. It is all over the world. Now, the Bible says all these ethnic nationalities must hear the gospel. The gospel must be preached to them. But the truth is that has the gospel been preached to every nationality? No. There are so many ethnic nationalities that are yet to receive the gospel. In fact, research shows that even in Nigeria, the country of Nigeria has received the gospel, but so many, there are some ethnic nationalities that have not received the gospel even in Nigeria. You know, Nigeria has over 250 ethnic nationalities. So, what is our role? We are to reach the unreached people groups. Who, what do we mean by the unreached people groups? Generally, when we are talking about reaching people with the gospel, ethnic nationalities are, are generally broadly classified into two. The reached and the unreached. Abby? The reached, the unreached. Now, among those unreached, they are further classified into three. So, we now have a total of four classifications of ethnic nationalities. So, what do we have? We have the rich nations. We have the engaged nations. We have the unengaged nations. And we have the unreached nations. Rich engaged unengaged and the unreached what do we mean by all that the rich nations they are the ones that have enough believers and enough christian workers and enough resources and churches that without any external external assistance from other people they are enough to spread the gospel to everyone within their ethnic nationality. A good example, Yoruba nation. Does Yoruba have enough Christians and churches and believers and, and, and resources to preach and spread the gospel to all the unconverted Yoruba people? Yes. We have enough people in Yoruba land. We have enough Christian workers. We have enough churches. We have enough resources that if the believers should take the work the way they should, it will spread to all the Yorubas. So the Yoruba ethnic nation, the Igbo ethnic nation, the Benins, Edo's, these ones are rich. They have enough people to propagate the gospel without, they don't need external assistance. They don't need people to come and join them. They have enough people to spread the gospel to everyone. Now, who are the engaged nations? The engaged nations are the nations that have, they have a substantial number of Christian workers. But they haven't they even have the resources but they have not they are work in progress towards becoming rich they have not spread the gospel enough they are still work in progress they have not spread the gospel enough to the extent that they have up to 12 percent of their population as pentecost as as um, evangelical believers those are the engaged nations the work is still ongoing, but they haven't grown up to that level. The unengaged nations, they just have a sprinkling of believers. And the people they have, they are not enough to propagate the gospel to all their nations, to all their ethnic group. Then we have the unread. Those ones, in fact, they work. It's as if it never even starts with them. So, and statistics shows that 
for the it means that you go from unengaged to unrich to engage to reached you start with unengaged you go to unrich then you go to engage unengaged and then reached among the engaged unengaged you have about 1340 nationalities the unrich you have 6700 nationalities and um, nationalities the engaged you have 173 and the rich you have 8300 approximately total is about 1650 ethnic nationalities all over the world so we see that we have enough nationalities that are rich but they're substantial that are unreached now why am i going into other statistics it's just to show us that what we need to do now is that there is a dire need for the unread and the unengaged we, there is a dire need for the read nations like yoruba igbo there is a dire need they need external assistance from yoruba igbo all these ethnic nationalities to come and assist them and let me tell you the truth is that many of them are in nigeria there is one of them that we are always complaining about but the truth is that they need the gospel the full animation it falls under that category so there is a need for us to now leave our own comfort zone and go and assist those people and let me tell you this the opportunities are now coming more and more of course we know the insurgency in the north banditry Boko Haram, all this insecurity before we will go from the south here we'll go and preach to them over there now do you know it has it has been made easier Abby? i don't know the one coming to meet us now they are coming to meet us and so when they are coming to meet us the first thing most of us say, ah these people they've come oh, they've come to bring their trouble they want to turn nigeria into they want to turn lagos the way they turn my degree but rather we should see an opportunity what's the opportunity i don't need to travel over there they are the ones traveling to meet me now so we'll preach the gospel to them and do you know that there are some churches that are latching on to this opportunity we have churches that are and we too were in the process we want to start an arewa church and let me tell you there is a ripe harvest field there very ripe harvest field in four square magodo some of us went there some years ago some sometime early this year to learn from them four square magodo district headquarters church is a district headquarters church so it's a big church but do you know that the arewa church is even bigger than the main service that's the hausa language church is bigger than the main service that's a district headquarters church why because those people saw that this is an opportunity to preach the gospel to these people and they gather them together and one thing about them is that the work is prospering there so there are opportunities for us to do this work of reaching the unread nations another opportunity we always talk about it but we've taken it for granted is the simplest of all that is to pray for them if we check the prayer points of many of us mission we don't even remember mission by the time you remember to pay for school fees to pray for promotion to pray for money to pray for house rate to pray for yourself to pray for everything by the time if you remember to pray for these unread groups maybe by then you're already feeling tired or you are preparing to go out so there's an opportunity for us to pray for these ones there's an opportunity to give thus we can sponsor missionaries going there and there's an opportunity to train missionaries before we used to restrict it to three we will say you go you give and you groan as you go you give you give send money you groan you pray the last one is to grow 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 that is to train people who will go so there are those opportunities now 
how do we do the resourcing that's getting the things we need for this work the first thing is that we need to catch the vision what is the vision we see when we see these people in luke chapter 19 jesus encountered a man the man was notorious by name zacchaeus he was a tax collector you won't understand what tax collector means in our own local palace tax collectors in those days they were the people's people who used to take sides with the roman masters to oppress the jews you know the jews saw the romans as their enemies they were actually their enemies the tax collectors were the jews among them who will now leave the jews and go and take sides with the romans and will oppress their fellow jews so tax collectors were hated many of them were evil and corrupt if you offend them like this they will just increase your tax and they will report to the roman emperor that this man refused to pay tax why maybe because you didn't greet them so they were evil but when jesus saw that man zacchaeus many of us when you see a policeman the first thing you say these people these oppressors go punish them no wonder they are always dying that's the way we see policemen abby but jesus saw this man he didn't look at him like that jesus saw him as a potential convert and jesus went and met him brought him down from the tree took him to his house and when he was entering the house people were saying do you know this man this man is the sinner now that you are entering his house jesus said today salvation has come to this house that was the vision jesus caught of zechariah of zacchaeus now when you see these people what is the vision you catch of them many of us when we see them ah these people they want to plant bomb in our country these people they've come to kill all our god people these people they've come to bring evil on our land they want to do what they are doing in the northwest and not they want to do, do it in lagos we reject them but if it had been jesus what vision would he have seen would he have seen that these people can become saved let me tell you this there are times i always think that these boko haram boys that assuming some of them can give their lives to christ many of them if they can become born again they will overtake many of us that are christians because those boys are ready to die many of us if the race if the rain falls we won't come to church some of us if they don't give us puff puff in church you won't come but these ones are people that are ready to, they are dying and they are always ready to die for the for for their cause so imagine these people that are so zealous they become born again and they become evangelists and missionaries you can see the way they will take the work of missions you can just imagine the way they will take the work of missions seriously so what is the vision you catch whenever you see these people is it the vision to curse them and to pray that god will kill them or the vision that you will get them converted the second thing is that you need empathy You need empathy the bible says in matthew chapter 9 setting from verse 35 it says that jesus saw the people and he said something he said they look like sheep without shepherd and he was moved with compassion you see many of us the issue of compassion has left us and it's one of the prayers i now pray for myself you know we've been so used to our hearts have been hardened so that compassion leaves i remember in those days whenever i come to lagos and i'll see people in the hold up beggars i will be moved with compassion even if i can't give them money the thing will be pain in me but now i'll just see them i beg come out and i'm praying that god should return that 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 empathy to me you need to be moved with compassion before you can see the, you can you can you can feel for these people if we see area boys many a times we just see these people are people that are doomed let them die and rot in hell that's what we think in our hearts but if you have a compassion in them that look this man is going to hell 
he needs to be saved so that he will not he will not end up in a bad way that's the type of empathy we, could, we need to feel for them if you scroll along old dojo road and you see this ndokwa hotel what do you feel when you see these girls and boys destroying their lives there do you just say these people let them go to hell or you think that these people are souls that jesus died for and these are souls that can be saved you need empathy for this for this work and lastly you need earnest prayers in fact by the time you have empathy you will be moved to pray for them and without prayer there is very little you can do no wonder the great apostle paul he kept saying pray for me pray for us he knew that even though he was zealous and even though he himself was praying he knew that he needed the support of the church in prayers he needed prayers for his work to to to, uh, to prosper you need prayers the late evangelist rehan bonke he used to say something he said I, I know many of us know grenades those of us that used to watch action film in those days the grenade they will remove the pin like this then they will throw it if you refuse to remove the grenade and you throw a grenade and the grenade lad what does it ha what that what happens to it it will just be dancing there nothing will happen but if you remove the grenade it becomes an explosive so Rehan Bonke says that he said that evangelism that lacks intercession it is like a grenade that the pin was not removed you are just doing the action it nothing can ever cause it to explode and he says ordinary intercession without evangelism it is just like that pin of the grenade the pin itself can't explode so you need the combination of the grenade and the pin you need the combination of evangelism plus intercession to make this work fruitful intercession without evangelism evangelism without intercession can never re reach, re result in anything now how do we reach to these unrich people groups you know we are talking about reaching the unrich people groups how do we reach to them the first thing we have to do is to explore them that's we try to understand them i know many of them are people that have offended us many of them are people that we are not happy with but you need to explore and understand them what do i mean in acts 17 starting from 22 to 24 the bible makes us to know that paul he was in athens and he was moving around the city and he saw so many monuments and so many things that were erected there to idols and he saw that there was one inscription to an unknown to the unknown god normally i would have expected paul to say to start cursing all of them god punish you all of you you are erecting idols everywhere but he came the bible said he came to reason to the, with them at their center where they normally sit and he he told them he said i, I, I appreciate that you are very religious people he was reasoning with them and he now told them he said that i see that you are very religious you even set up a monument for an unknown god i know that you are looking for god but that is the god i want to show you now he came to reason with them and understood them many of times where our evangelism is not fruitful do you know the reason many times the only thing we tell them the bible says this the bible says this those people do they even believe the bible when you want to talk to a muslim for instance you need to understand what is their mentality the mentality of the average muslim is that even jesus is a prophet jesus is a good man according to them but why they disagree with you is that according to them 
God does not have a wife. And so he doesn't have a child. According to their reasoning, before you can have a son, you must have a wife. And since God has no wife, he cannot have a son. That closes the case. So you need to reason with them. There are some people that when you reason with them, you have to know why they are so violent. In their violence, they think they are doing the work of God. Some of them are not doing it because they hate you, but it's because they think they are doing the work of God. So you need to reason with them and understand them so that you'll be able to come down to their level. So you need to explore these unread people groups. After exploring them, you need to engage with them. Interact with them. The first thing starts with learning their language. You learn their language, learn their culture, learn their behavior. For instance, you will see many of these our missionaries to those areas. One of the things they do, they grow beer beer like goats. Do you think it's because they like that beer beer? Because they have to engage with them. You can't go to somewhere like Afghanistan and say you want to preach the gospel and you dress in suit like me. You have to wear their type of trouser and do the way they behave. So, many a times when we say we're engaging, we separate ourselves from them, we will now be so separate as if we are, we are castigating them. You need to come down to their level. Interact with them. Do what they do. I mean, to a reasonable extent. Paul said that to the Jews, I became a Jew. To the Gentiles, I became a Gentile. To, the, to, to, to those without the law, I became as one without the law. So you engage with them. And let me tell you, their culture is something that is difficult to break. You must respect the culture of anyone. Then we go to the stage of entrenchment. That has to do with church planting and discipleship. After interacting with them, and we get some of them so say, let there be a church in their locality. And raise up people in that church. Indigenous people to propagate the church. For instance, to propagate the work. For instance, one of the things we learned in the Ariwa, about the Ariwa church, we're thinking about, we're planning about, is that we can't say because um, Sister Pat speaks fluent Hausa, even though she's not from Hausa land, will now make her to be pastor of that church. You must get somebody from that area to speak with them, to be their pastor. So it is part of the entrenchment. And then one of the, th the, the in, uh, and in addition to that, you now have to do with evolution and leadership development. And it also includes, involves social interaction. What do I mean by social interaction? For the gospel to really penetrate an area, the community must be affected. I'll give an example. In the days of the Welsh revival in the early 1900s, in the days of Charles Parham and, Ro and John Wesley, something significant happened that the revival affected their industry. How did it affect their industry? They had to retrain their horses. You know, in those days, they were still using horses to drive most of their machines. They saw that their machines refused, their horses refused to walk. What happened? Before the people became born again, they were used to, when they want to command their horses, they would say, come on, move, you stupid fucking asshole. You damn thing. That was how they would command the horses. But when those people became born again, they knew you should not speak such, such vulgar languages. So the horse that they would shout curses on, they now tell the horse to move. The horse will still be standing, waiting for them to use those swear words. So it grounded their industry. They now had to train their horses again that when we say move without saying asso, you move. So the same way, if the, if, if the gospel, you must see the impact in the lives of the people of the community 
in Nigeria, we heard of Mary Slazer. There was an area in Nigeria where they used to kill twins. Mary Slazer, through her work, she stopped that killing. And today, thank God, they no longer kill twins in that place. Hallelujah. So, it must affect the society. We must see the fruit in the society. In the days of the apostles, the Bible says that they said that these men have come to turn the world upside down. They were not turning the world upside down. But you notice that these people were affecting the world. They affected the world so much that whenever they came to another village, they would say, ah, those people have come, or those people that shook the other city, they've come here. They knew them. They could see that it was affecting their communities. Real mission work will affect the community. They must see the fruit of righteousness in the people. In the days of, I remember in those days in Benin language, in Benin city, in Benin and environs, before Archbishop Idahosake started his work, in those days, Benin was sold to idolatry. But when Archbishop Idahosa came there, in fact, in those days, people used to be proud to say that they were witches. When Archbishop Idahosa started the thing, witches started running. Up. In fact, they must not hear you to be a witch. So it affects, it must affect the society. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, it tells us something. Paul was giving a charge to his son, Timothy. He said, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. It talks about development of leadership. He says, I thought you people were projecting it. He says, the things that... 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Uh, okay, it says that, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, it says, The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we are supposed to raise faithful men who will teach, who will become leaders. In reaching the unreached souls, you have to raise up people within that community who will become leaders and will also disciple others so that the work continues. That is the only way the work can be sustained. In conclusion, we should know that it is the will of God that all nations, all these ethnic nationalities should be saved. And the onus is on us they need our help. They need our help. There are so many nations here. Many of us are from the nationalities that have enough Christians. They need people like you to go and send help to them. There are countries, there are nations that are dying for the gospel. Afghanistan is there. Even in Nigeria, in the north, there are so many nations. The Kanuri nation is there. There are some in the far north. We heard of the, the work being done in Koma Hills. Thank God for the work. But they still need our help. Adamawa is dying for the gospel. There are so many nations in Adamawa that are dying for the gospel. Now, what is our role? You can go there. You can send your money. You can pray for them. And you can raise up leaders train leaders so i would just want us i know we've always been saying we will pray we will pray we will pray and we always promise to give i know we still have two more sundays and there will be so much too many commit so, so many so many there will still be a few commitments but i want us to make this commitment just this one choose an ethnic nationality that you want to pray for choose an ethnic nationality you want to pray for or it may even be a geographical country the ethnic nationalities in that country one of the countries that is dying for the gospel now is afghanistan saudi arabia is there thank god for the work god is doing there even northern part of nigeria is there there are countries like libya there is sudan where the gospel they are dying for the gospel shall we pray just choose one of them and ask god god i make a commitment that i will be praying for these ones shall we rise up to our prayer to our feet
shall we begin to talk god to god maybe there is a nation you've chosen it may be an ethnic nationality it may even be a geographical country i've mentioned a country like libya afghanistan is in need of god the gospel iraq is there many of these islamic countries even northern nigeria is there adamawa state needs the gospel borno state needs the gospel even zamfara state is dying for the gospel that's within our local nation shall we choose one of these things and just pray god i choose to be praying for this nation as god i choose i pledge that i'll be praying for these nations every day and if there is anyone who has who needs to give his life to christ maybe you are here to give your life to christ there's an opportunity for you today just come forward without wasting much time there's an opportunity for as many as have not received the gospel to receive it today just come forward and say jesus i want you to become my lord and savior if there's such a person just come forward straight while the rest of us begin to pray and ask god god give me the grace to pray for this nation to pray for the the group the ethnic group or the or the country the geographical area I've, I've chosen for the ethnic groups within that area lord give me the grace to pray for them and give me the grace to arise and to be able to, to, to do your work our father in heaven we thank you for that which you've deposited in us in this area thank you god for even blessing many of us with people groups that have enough of people to do your work lord we thank you for it there's an opportunity for us to launch out to other nations lord we ask that you rekind you bring that zeal put that fire in us lord stir us up in our hearts lord that we will arise to do your work in jesus name that we will arise to raise support to give support to those places which are dying for the gospel in the name of jesus we pray lord for every one of us that as many as have chosen a nation or a, a, an area to pray for lord give us that diligence in jesus name help us that we will not be slack in this work but you continually remind us and help us to be awake to this responsibility in jesus name we pray amen